but Riley Cooper, I mean, like, that dude deserves a statue. Yeah, I mean, like, hey, hey, number one on your speed dial. Hey, I'll tell you what, like, I mean, I didn't know until a couple of days after the fact. I was like, wait a minute, you see the MVP or like we got the yeah, alternative yeah, team? No doubt about it. And then Ty Floyd, when I sure got 17, Jeez. and like stole it from him. But I was like, when is a pitcher like been a part of like five of the six wins in Omaha? I mean, what a performance. Great to meet you. Thanks, sir. Thank you for the time. Yes, sir. So I'm a little late, boys, at the spring game, obviously, as you can see. A couple of booze cruises here to do. Let's do it. Cruise. Grand salami to the boys. Finally back on track. And I got another one coming. Don't you think I don't? That's how we roll in Tiger Stadium. Just watching the spring games that were on television, one thing that jumped out about your squad is your quarterback room is very talented yeah. compared to a lot of the league and a lot of the, the country. I, I wonder, is, is it easier to recruit that position when you have talent or when you don't have talent? Coach Kelly. We're official. Finally, I'm get a chance you. to meet you. Thought I had to get a private audience with the Pope. There's just there's Jordy. Monday through Friday from seven to nine. Yeah, you see the notification. We about to go live. We got all your favorite guests. We got them in line. It's the Jordy Collider Show. Yeah, Come have a good time. Clearing up, answering the question. I thought, my God, if Chica is offered this job, she's gonna take it. It's just a crazy fun time at LSU right now. Isn't this what everybody loves? From the boot to the east to the west coast, no matter where we get, we got the show. Open up the phone lines, come and join the show. Make sure you tell your friends about Jordan Collider Show. Yeah. Let's go. All right. Nice start. Big day. Nice start. It's the Jordan Collider Show. Come have a good time. Coach, it's great to meet you. Thanks, sir. Thank you for the time. All right, welcome into a Wednesday edition of the Jordy Colada Show, live here from our Click Here Digital Campus on this pre-Thanksgiving show. We appreciate everybody being here. Happy Thanksgiving to you. If you don't mind, hit that like button, share button, comment button. It will be the last show of the week. We'll be back with you on Monday. We'll be recapping what I believe is going to be a crazy start to the week. I think LSU is going to be in the newswire pretty fast here after LSU A&M on Saturday. We'll talk all about that coming up here on the uh, on the show. Uh, really looking forward to our 7.30 segment with Preston Guy. Uh, we were talking before the show. Uh, Preston Guy has become like the Chris Nakamoto <laughs> of, uh, of Twitter for LSU sports. Uh, if you see him creeping around your, your mentions, uh, odds are you're in trouble. Uh, people have been talking a little smack about Jaden Daniels being on the finalist list for the Heisman Trophy, and my guy Preston Guy has just been hitting them with the facts. Just straight numbers, hey straight maker. stats, hey maker. straight facts. And, I mean, has sat a lot of people down on social media. Uh, we will talk to him coming up here at 7.30 this morning, then Jacques will be through in his typical Wednesday spot here on this uh, on this Wednesday. Lloyd is back uh, here on the, uh, on the show. Uh, Stewie is live here on this Tuesday, on this Wednesday. Uh, so make sure and hit the like button, uh, share button, uh, comment button if you don't mind. And uh, if you have not subscribed to the show, make sure and give us a, a uh, subscription 
uh, before you get out of here. So looking forward to uh, to uh, getting uh, the last show of the week in the books, and then uh, heading to uh, Thanksgiving, and then getting back to uh, getting back to the show on Monday. It's going to be a wild weekend. I, I, I believe that it is going to be a wild weekend with LSU. I think LSU is going to be in the news wire really quick uh, after Sun or, uh, after Saturday's game. Uh, versus a and m look obviously you want to close out the season on a high note you want to close the season out uh, with 10 wins and, and LSU is going to uh, have that chance to do that uh, come Saturday uh, they also are looking to uh, close with some positive momentum heading into the uh, you know the end of the regular season but for all intents and purposes I think LSU is going to be in the market for players. Uh, for coaches, and all of that is going to begin uh, in fury on on Saturday. I, I think that you'll start to see that that move really quickly here. Now, look, the transfer portal doesn't open uh, for a couple of days, but I, I really liken this to, to NFL free agency, NBA free agency. How many times do we hear that you know NBA free agency usually starts on July 1st? When July 1st at midnight hits, all the deals are done. Like once... You know, like they, they've all been done, you know, before before the the, the legal the legal tampering. negotiating yeah. period. <laughs> they could think of a better up. name. It right. was there's the tapering period. Then there's the whoa, whoa. Then you have the legal tampering period. It's like just say it's open season. It's just a, it's a great way to define actually what's going on. We're we're tampering during the tampering period and we're definitely tampering during the legal tampering period, which I don't know what else she was going to do in terms of how they get players in, but we've seen this happen in the portal before, right? Where you have friends of guys or coaches on staff that you can get the word out because they're going to have to go into that thing again. And I wanted to ask you, when's the last time it felt like it's been wholesale changes around the staff, especially on one side of the ball, for LSU had to go out and get, we might have to go get three guys. Yeah, no, I, I look, I, I mean, you would probably have to go back to the Miles days when the offense was was struggling as bad as it was and – you know, Miles would try and 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 pull some moves, and and really could never catch a break. If you remember, he tried to make the move to Steve Cragthorpe in 2011, and Coach Crag was was diagnosed with Parkinson's there. Pretty shortly after they made the move, uh, that that was then on Greg Stadrawa, who was the offensive line coach, along with Steve Insminger at the time, was the tight ends coach, who were pulling off some some co OC responsibilities. Uh, he then brought in his his friend in Cam Cameron uh, that he just totally whiffed on. Um, but, you know, I mean, as far as wholesale changes, when you're talking about a side of the ball, when you're talking about a staff, when you're talking about an entire unit, I I really don't – I don't know. I mean, I, I can't think of one uh, that, that would resemble this. And, you know, the, the, the sticky part about it is th- there is – there's a pecking, there's a line to this. You want to be, you know, you kind of want to be in the front of the line. You want to be, you know, ones that are that are out in front knowing that, you know, the, the job is open. Uh, you know, people want to know how much that the, the price tag is going to, to, to be on it and what are the, you know, what are the qualifications? What are you looking for? And, you know, this is going to be a, an urgent move because of the recruiting calendar. When you talk about the transfer portal and you talk about the early signing period and what LSU really needs to make an impact on, they don't have any time to waste. I mean, not you're not talking about days. You're talking about minutes. You're talking about hours. You're talking about, you know, I mean, time that you got to get on the road. Frank Wilson always told the story. I believe he told the story on the show. You know, when he got the job, I mean, he, he was like kind of looking around in the closet. He didn't have anything to wear, you know what I mean? But he had to go to work. I mean, he went straight – to, to the campus of Trevante Citizen in Lake Charles, and he had pulled like a leather jacket out from you know, 2003. Six, six years before uh, that, that he was just sporting it, you know, like in the middle of a, uh, you know, like a 80, 80 degree day. Batman closet. Um, but I mean, it just, it, it, it proves the point that you just hit the job running, you know, I mean, and I think that is going to be the sentiment for whatever happens for LSU on. The defensive side of the ball and you know Josh Pate was here yesterday and if you follow Josh Pate's work he's very well connected um you know in in college football and has good connections 
in in getting his information. And if you've been following him, he's been saying a lot of the the, the same stuff that that we've been hearing and the the stuff that we've been saying here. I mean. Uh, expect the defensive staff to move pretty quickly once the season ends and that process has been put into play now for you know weeks i think they've been searching shortlisting getting guys in line of who they want to look at and bring in and that way there's no time wasted because you got to you, you got to get in, in front of players you got to get into recruiting you have to get into roster building and roster management because you know i think this is the first cycle that we will see where there's a at least somewhat of an understanding of what NIL transfer portal the rules of the system look like the the previous two cycles on this it's kind of been people looking around like wait do can you can we do this do you do that how do you i think now it's about to be wide open I mean, this is once this portal opens, and is it? I think it's Monday, I believe, or it might be December fourteenth. Is that the the day the portal opens? If you want to check that date, but whatever date that is, and it's coming up here shortly. You got the early signing period with the high school players, and you have the, December fourth. The, the uh, December fourth. So you're talking about what? Two weeks. Mm-hmm. It is going to be a free for all. Like this, this, this one in particular, I believe is, is, you know, people have an understanding of how it works. People have gone through the process. People have seen how, how people that have done it successfully operate and people are going to try and emulate that on their own camp. It's good. It's about to be wild, man. I, I really, I, I can't, I can't wait to see how it, it unfolds, but if you're a team that is going through change, what ultimately LSU is going to have to go through some change, you have to get there really quick. I mean, you have to you have to make those moves really quick because this is a a key part in what the future is going to look like for for the next for the next cycle, for for what your team looks like next season. You've got to be stable come December fourth. Because this this early transfer portal and early signing period is enormous for a team like LSU that is looking to add some 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 depth, some players, some I mean they 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 need some some roster management, and, and all of that is about to take shape. And it's already kind of starting to bubble to the surface here with the report from Jerry Hamilton inside Texas saying that Texas A&M star wide receiver Evan Stewart is a strong is a strong candidate to enter the transfer portal. Obviously, listing Alabama as the team to beat with Ohio State, Texas, Oregon, former five star that's been at A and M for a minute and hasn't really been. Been watching Evan Stewart's Twitter. Trust me, Alabama ain't that leader. The waves that this is going to create, but see, like Stewie, you say that in an NIL world, they everybody, can't the deal. everybody is going to have a seat at the table for a kid like Evan Stewart. If you're in the market for a wide receiver, if you're looking for a market, this is NFL free agency. Let's yeah. call it for what it is. People understand now that Evan Stewart is is thinking, flirting, talking like he's going to go into the portal. Well, guess what? Contact has already been made with Evan Stewart if you're a team that needs a wide receiver, right? Who needs a wide receiver? I'd say LSU would be in the market for a wide receiver, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? I mean, as much turnover as they have. Texas sounds like one, right, with Xavier Worthy leaving after this season. He was their big playmaker on the outside. Alabama always – needs a wide receiver. I'd imagine George is probably in the market for a wide receiver, a guy of 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 his his standard. So they've already established contact with former high school coach, with brother, with uncle, with cousin, with handler who they were dealing with when all of these schools were recruiting Evan Stewart 2 years ago. And they just picked back up those relationships. I'd imagine in some situations those contacts haven't even fell off. Like the communication, they're probably on every Saturday like, yeah, man, tell, tell Evan, great game. Or there might be to, you know, talking directly to him. But, you know, a lot of these deals are going to be done before December 4th. You know, a lot like in NFL free agency, a lot like NBA free agency. Where you get to the days that you open up the period, and you're like, well, I mean, like all, all the action's done. 
You already know what's ever you know, you already know what's happening. So, I mean, a kid like Evan Stewart, he puts his his name into the into the portal. It's it's going to be a free for all. And that's where people- I mean, some of the numbers, some of the the, the amount of money that's going to be thrown around here in college football over the next couple of months is going to blow people's mind. I mean, like you think of a kid like Tyler Van Dyke at Miami, who we brought up, a guy that was, I mean, he was close to going to Bama last season, mm-hmm. right? I mean, if you, if you recall, Bama was in the quarterback market last year at this time. I mean, they were flirting with Nussmeyer. They were flirting with, with Tyler Van Dyke. They were, flirt, they were flirting with anybody that would talk to him and they saw they settled on Tyler Buckner from Notre Dame, who can't play dead in a Western. And they gave him money. I mean, think about what the quarterback market is going. Think about what Evan Stewart's about to get. I mean, it's about to be wild. It's about to be wild, man. It's about mm-hmm. to be a free for all in college football that we have no understanding of what it's going to look like because I think this is the first time that it's going to be wide open. I mean, if you think back for the last couple of years, I mean, people were like, is Bama talking to Nussmeyer? Is Bama talking to those quarterbacks? Now you're going to know. Like, they are absolutely talking to him. They're negotiating six-figure deals with him. In some cases, maybe seven-figure deals with some of these guys. And they're trying to to get the deal done as fast as possible. That's why, you know, you, you can follow social media and you can say Evan Stewart doesn't like Alabama. He doesn't like Alabama until they pull up to the table and they say, hey, look, here's a job. Here, here's a job for your mom and here's a seven-figure deal for you. Roll Tide. You in? And that's what I don't think that whenever the, both of these things were conceived at the same time, talking NIL and transfer portal, that this was going to be the great comeuppance of, oh, God, we shouldn't have done this at the same time, where NIL now becomes the face of the transfer portal. It was a way to give them a one-time free waiver to go transfer to a school that if you're not getting playing time, yada, yada, you can go look around. You're not stuck to a school or if a coach leaves. Now you don't have to sit out a year. You can go look. And now with NIL coming at the same time, it became, well, we can just pay them to come here and they get a free waiver. It's also the urgency of being able to put your people, your personnel, your coaches in place as fast as possible because not only do you have to go after the guys in the transfer portal, and, and LSU is going to have to make, make some waves again in the portal. They're going to have to go after some top-flight guys that they have on their board and be able to land, whether it's through NIL or whether it's through a coach being able to sell them on the program, right? Other responsibility – for the coach being in place as fast as possible is roster retention. I mean, as fast as this transfer portal is going to open up for other players around the country and you're going to have an opportunity to recruit those guys, the last thing you want is for your crew, your young group of talented guys like Deshaun Walmack, Whit Weeks, Javian Toviano, guys like that to start considering jumping in to the portal. So you got to make sure that you're stable on that side of the ball where you can sell the message of, hey, look, you're not going anywhere. This is what the future is. This is what the plan is. Let's get to work. And that's why I believe that LSU is going to be in the news cycle very fast this weekend. I mean, like you're going to see it really, really quick happen. And it's going to have to happen fast because – you know, that's just the way of the, 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 the college football schedule now. And they're going to have to be, it's not even so much off the field as it will be on the field. It starts at 11 a.m. kick when you still have somebody go for the Heisman, where you'll have Jane Daniels very much in the spotlight on Saturday going into the season. Then that'll hold, that all will carry over into the, if he plays well, then you have Ohio State Michigan at what, 3 or 2.30? Is that what's the next game on the docket? Ohio State, Michigan played 11. They played 11 also? So yeah. you have both of them going head-to-head on the big noon kickoff for LSU on ESPN. Yeah. So LSU will very much be in the newswire what happens on the field. It's going to be a big weekend. It is. It's going to be one of those weekends where, I mean, look, you, you're, you're going to be glued to the ticker 
uh, you know, for for what's breaking, what's happening, what's going on. I will not be fooled by the ticker again. Who, who, who's going where? Tom Herman to LSU during Thanksgiving Day, during the game. LSU was playing A&M. LSU was playing A&M? Beat Geist, him too. Darius Geis. Geis so, was going. 285. Geis went off. And it's like halfway through the, what, second or third quarter where yeah. it comes across the ticker that – LSU's new head coach is Tom Herman. Expected like announcement expected after the game or whatever. Like, what's happening? And then fast forward twelve hours, Tom Herman signed with Texas. So the ticker will be down there, but until that until that ink is dry, you do not know. But it, it, this is what it always feels like around this time of year. Yeah, especially like you're in the fortunate position for LSU to you don't have to worry about your head coach. You're looking at okay, what do we have to do transfer portal wise, NIL wise, I guess. And then if we're trying to fill some spots on the defensive side where this is their last chance for if you feel like you're on the hot seat, whether you're Matt House, Robert Steeples, Kerry Cooks, if you're any of those guys, like this is your last audition for either to stay or to find another job. Where people... uh, no, it's it's done. It's cooked. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's done. It's we're still got to audition. It's done. It's cooked. Uh, I mean, there, there's just. There, it's too much. on yeah, right, The writing's on the wall. It's too much. It's too I mean, much. turn on the old Miss tape. I don't want to. Turn on Florida State. But that's Turn the problem on. Georgia and Alabama are. Exactly. They're, they're turning it on for, for recruits, and they're telling people, I mean, you could go there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, you, you don't they don't think, even know what to do with Harold Perkins. Right. You don't think Texas pulled Keelan Moses and Florida pulled I mean, Keelan Moses I, I, and Roman State? I know the Moses. Look at this. Well, I mean, I know them. You know, I mean, I, I, that's what other schools are telling, you know, Keelan Moses. Like, they don't even know what to do with Harold Perkins. So you think they're gonna know what to do? They're gonna you? know you're like you. You are more of a Swiss Army knife than he is. You play more positions in high school than Harold Perkins did. I mean, Keelan Moses does everything at U High. Yeah. I mean, he's a lot like the 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 player of you know Keelan. I mean that that Harold Perkins was coming out of high school. It's like, you know, what is he really? I mean, is he is he a defensive end? Is he a linebacker? Is he a safety? Is he a running back? Is he a I mean, is he a punt returner? Is he a punter? I mean, he does everything. So I mean, when you get to college, you're gonna have to have somebody that's like, hey man, look, this is who you are. This is what we're gonna develop you into, and this is how you're gonna help us win. And other schools are rolling into Keelan Moses' living room and being like, hey man, I, I know you love LSU. I know you want to, you want to go, and I still believe LSU is the leader for next week's announcement. But I mean, in all reality, they're screwing up Harold Perkins. So, you know, I mean, I, I think for guys like that, yeah, this staff is, you know, I mean, it's, cut the check. <laughs> it, it's you I have mean, to he's have not having that much of a being asked to do more. I mean, we look at the numbers; he has. Ten fewer tackles, one and a half fewer tackles for loss, one and two and a half fewer sacks, same amount of picks, three more passes defended, and one less fewer fumble. But I mean, I mean this one is spectrum a, well care. I'm not talking about Perkins. I'm I, talking about Keelan Moses. I think that's more of a testament to how good Harold that's Perkins is more than how they're using him. Yes, absolutely. Me, me too. It is. Like it 100 percent is. But I think that's what they want to do. That was yeah. The, they want to show how good he is, but it's like also you don't put that versatility into a box. You let him do what yeah. he does well, which is everything. But it turns out the defense is so bad around him that there's nothing you can really do. That's not on Harold Perkins or how to use him and how to no, no, look, like, man, define his Cream versatility. is going to rise to the top. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, remember when LSU didn't even throw the ball, Reuben Randall was still good. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like, how is this guy good? They don't even throw it. We're like, well, every opportunity he gets, he makes plays. Yeah, he's just the first down on a touchdown. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. The guy's a freak. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Harold Perkins, you're like, yeah, man. I mean, like, we'll play you here. We'll play you there. We'll put you here. We'll put you there. We don't really know what we want to do with you, like, consistently. But everywhere you put him, he's still one of the best players on the field. Yeah. I think that if is not what, the best. Still going to make a play. That is what they want to do with it. That is. That, but is it's it? like, yeah. I, think, I think they accidentally fell into yeah, what they're doing. They fell now. into I their think ass doing, on Harold Perkins playing nickel. I mean, like, going into the season, it took, what, four weeks for you yeah. to be like, what are they trying to do? With potentially the best defensive player in college football, right? And I, I mean, think it, where it was like they, 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 you saw it in spring. Mm -hmm. Like looking at this defense now, you could see it in spring where we were really minimizing the fact that he was putting him in the middle every day. He was teaching him the principles, and it was like, "What are you doing? What are you doing? What, 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 what what's going on with with Perkins? Like, why?" 
why are you taking these these 15 practices and not Just like kind of like middle. Well, what are you going to do with him next year? He's not going to be your middle linebacker, is he? <laughs> At first they were like – And then like you get to the season – because remember Brian Kelly was telling you in the press conferences in spring, he was like, well, no, you want to make sure when he gets to the NFL, that the combine, that he's got a position, that he, he knows how to play, that he's like – and we were kind of debating like even in the spring, you're like, I mean, is that your responsibility or is that, you know, kind of like does the NFL need to figure out what position he – okay, well, whatever, you guys can – okay, we'll do it. Just as long as you don't screw him up in the fall. And then you get to the first month and you're like, damn, they don't know what to do with him. Well, yeah. I feel like it was because of everything that happened, defense is kind of built like front to back, right? If you have no push on the defensive line, then it gets to the linebackers and it affects how your corners and safety play. The big thing that came out of the Florida State game was like, this defensive line doesn't do it. Like, they don't know what they're doing. Well, and then that affects Harold Perkins trying to make calls where he's in a new position. Now he's got hands on him immediately. Just, They're getting to the second level so fast, and he's over there trying to make calls to a defense that has never played together before. So then you scrap it because you lost, and it didn't, it didn't look good, right? And then you start finding out, okay, well, let's see if we can fix the defensive line a little bit. And is that Harold Perkins coming off the edge? You don't want to put, put him in a box there. I kind of like it. I love how like Isaiah Simmons is used. Yeah, but he's also 6'4", 240 yeah, pounds. But he's the best athlete out there. I, I just don't want Harold Perkins to end up having the same career as Isaiah Simmons. No, don't. but that's what, that's what they – and I, I would imagine Isaiah Simmons would tell you, I've had a pretty good career considering what I've been asked yeah, to do. Yeah, right. I mean, like you look at his bank account. Yeah. I mean, it's, been, it's been awesome. He'll be in the league forever because – But he's still kind of like this dude that doesn't have a home. Right, you know, exactly. Like, and that's a product of being almost too talented. Perkins, that's why when people say Perkins is going to the portal – no way. The, right. There's no, not going to be – it would be well, financially I mean, just, irresponsible for him to go and learn another – not even learn a new position, but learn everything all over again whenever you're very close to being at 100% here if it only takes one more year. And if they have to get a new defensive coordinator that has an identity for him, so be it. But it feels like he's comfortable here and up, uprooting oh, he is. I agree and leaving I agree wouldn't really be – that's not the – that's going to change He's anything. still shining. That's what I'm saying. It's not going to change shining. anything for Harold It's Perkins. not as yeah, if he's, he's still, on the he's bench. Still the best like, you can't the find team. him. I mean, right. he's, still, he's still the dude. I yeah. mean, like, he can still walk around campus and people are like, yeah, that's, there's that's Perk. Harold Perkins. Yeah, yeah, right. Perk, I, mean, I so don't know about the other 10 of y'all, but I know exactly. about Exactly. I mean, like, and, and there's no doubt to that. Nope. You know what I mean? Like, I, I still, when I watch this defense play, I mean, you're like, four's a dog. Number four could play, huh? I mean, like, four could play in any era of LSU's defense. Yeah. I mean, he would play on the 2011 defense. Yep. Yep. And so, I mean, I think know. that's where the frustration is more with their, because they lack talent everywhere else, that he's the most talented player, that he started to be duct tape for the I defense. Agree. I agree. Uh, remember, Daily, we're brought to you by Go Roof online at geauxroof.com. Get in touch with Go Roof, and you can find them uh, as well at 927 8300. That's a 225 area code, 927 8300, where you can find our friends over at Go Roof. Two year free workmanship guarantee with all new roof installations, competitive pricing, and free quotes available from Go Roof, 225 927 8300. Over 15 years of experience for residential roofing, commercial roofing, and roof repairs. Go Roof online, G E A U X Roof.com. G E A U X Roof.com is where you can find them online. A beautiful roof every single time. Tell our friends, roof up, uh, roofs up with our, uh, with our boys over at Go Roof. G E A U X Roof.com and 225 927 8300 is the phone number. All right, so um, investigative reporting is one thing that I find fascinating on television, whether it's 60 Minutes or Chris Nakamoto. Uh, it's always got that that deliverable, right? It always hits. Uh, one thing that has been fun to watch on social media over the last couple of days and week here is a uh, good friend in media, Preston Guy, cooking social media with the facts of Jaden Daniels to people saying that, you know, Daniels is no good or he couldn't do this when Preston Guy is just hitting them with the numbers. Like, I was listening to Ryan Leaf last night. And look, I'm not here to talk about Leaf and what what happened with him. I'm just talking about college, the, the college football analyst Ryan Leaf. And for all what Leaf has been through in his past, I think Leaf has some pretty good college football takes in listening to him. You know, I mean, I've heard him on national shows, I've heard him on podcasts, I've heard him have some takes on on some quarterback play. And, and for his evaluation and for his take, I've always kind of thought, man, he's he's pretty measured. 
He, he sounds like he, he's into it. He's watching. He had a take on Jaden Daniels last night that I thought was so uninformed and so uneducated and immature that it was it, it was it was tough to watch. I mean, it was kind of cringy. I thought to watch. You can maybe pull it up, Stewie. You can probably find it on social media because you know Leaf said and and kind of followed this narrative that's been coming out of the West, and I don't know why it has to go to Jaden Daniels wouldn't start at Oregon or Washington. And you're like, okay, well, I mean, in all reality, Michael Penix and Bo Nix wouldn't start at LSU, if that's the argument you want to make. But, I mean, like, I, I don't get it. So, you don't want a quarterback that throws for 3,500 yards and – Rushes for a thousand. I mean, what are what are you saying by having that take? And then it's just, well, I'm just telling you he wouldn't. Okay, so it's just your opinion, right? Which you're entitled to, and I get. And that's what this has kind of turned into from a social media standpoint, where everybody's saying, you know, Jaden Daniels doesn't deserve the the Heisman just cause. <laughs> and and you're like, well, all right, well, I mean, he, here's why he does, right? Like, here here's why he, he he does deserve the Heisman. And Preston Guy has been doing bang up work of just hitting people in the face with the numbers. You know, what I mean, like the, the most plays of 20 yards or more, the gap between Jane Daniels. And the next play, it, it's crazy. I mean, he probably has it memorized by now. It's wild. Do we have? Preston, available? All right, let's jump right into it and welcome him into the conversation. Preston's doing great work uh, for, for, for Tiger Bait. You can find him uh, on social media at PGuy underscore 77 uh, is where you can hit him on social. Uh, and like I, like I said, for, just for the follow, I mean, just to people watch. I mean, just if you want to kind of get over there and lurk on social media. I mean, Guy has been just cooking people uh, here of late. So, Preston, welcome to the conversation. Good to see you. Good morning. Hey, Jordy. What's going on? Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Now, somebody's had to do, to, to do this work, and, and we appreciate <laughs> you more than anything of, of kind of picking this up. Where did this start? What, what, what threw you over the edge? Where were you like, all right, that's it. Enough's enough. My time to shine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm usually a little more um, reserved and Agreed. calculated. Yes, I try. I try not to be hyperbolic or uh, you know just throw energy into stuff that doesn't need energy. I, I looked up after that Florida game, and I realized Jaden Daniels is no doubt the best player in the country. Not not a Heisman contender, the best player in the country. Right, and I, I felt like the gap wasn't there. And then I recognized Jaden Daniels is not going to have the platform that Bo Nix, Michael Penix Jr., or, or even a Marvin Harrison Jr. are going to have moving forward, right? Because he's going to play Georgia State at the time and then Texas A&M with no coach. Uh, and, and then the time slot, 11 a.m., head-to-head with Ohio State, Michigan. He's not going to have the platform, right? So if he's going to win the Heisman Trophy, which he deserves, uh, he's going to need some help. He's going to need media and fans to push this out. So I put a little something out there telling fans, like, look, guys, uh, Heisman Trophy is the biggest thing LSU's got left. Mm-hmm. That's, 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 that's it. You know, uh, it, 10 wins d- happens all the time at LSU. Top 10 finish, okay, nice. But uh, LSU has – it's actually rarer to win a Heisman at LSU than to win a national championship. So that's a major thing that can bolster the program. And then the second thing was, should I do this? Uh, Because, you know, I'm not going to just go out there and and go on a a raid just because it helps LSU. That's not my thing. But he deserves it. It's the right thing to do. So, um, you know, when the facts line up as as strongly as they do in support of Jaden, and you got people out there just saying all nonsensical things like was the John Canizero guy, he'd be holding a clipboard. Like, okay, man, you're just saying he'd hold a clipboard with no evidence. Here's my yeah. evidence. What's right. yours? Yeah. And I just went on and on and on. I kind of had been like compiling little nuggets of information about how good he is. I'm like, all right, let's just put it all in one tweet and put it out there. And, and I'd, I'd say that people have enjoyed that. Did he answer 
Did he ever no. respond? Okay. Yeah, I was about yeah, to say. How many people yeah. have? Yeah, I mean, a lot of people did on his behalf. Sure. And it's funny. Um, you know, I, I think if you need one clear cut fact to tell you why Jaden Daniels deserves the Heisman, yeah. it's this it, it's that people who think Jaden Daniels deserves the Heisman, Heisman talk about what Jaden Daniels has accomplished. People who think Penix or Bo Nix deserve it, right? They're talking trash on Jaden Daniels. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Punching, uh, you know? punching up, yeah, it's, it's a good point, Preston. What is to you uh, the fact and stat compiler here uh, of Jaden Daniels' greatness here in twenty three? What's the most impressive stat that that he he has? It's a, uh, I mean, it's a combination of all of them. Um, you know, the thing is about great players is you can look at numbers, right, and they might look impressive. But with great players, the more context you add to those numbers, the better they become because they're no they're non debunkable at a certain point. Um, I would say the fact that he has passing numbers that are really he leads the country. I'm, I'm sorry, he leads SBS history right now in passer rating. Just as a passer, right? Mm-hmm. 208, it's it's one point higher than, I believe it was Kyler Murray's mark of 207. Highest in, in, in FBS history, right? Um, and he's third in the nation in passing, leads the nation in passing touchdowns. All of that's all hunky-dory. And then you add on to the fact he's a thousand-yard rusher on top of that. Which people like Best to leave out. Best in the country. Right. <laughs> You know, um, yeah, a lot of people are intentionally leaving that out. So he leads the nation in total yards by more than 800 yards. Sherman Wilson put out a graphic of him having 4,000 something yards, right? Uh, that was, that was a week old. And by the way, it still would lead the nation by more than 400 yards in total yards, a week old. So he's basically two weeks ahead of everybody else in the country, you know, and, and then you add context. Everybody's, well, he's padding stats against Georgia State. Okay, is he? Because if you look at the 20-plus yard plays, which he leads the country in by a lot, he has more 20-plus yard plays than any other team in the country. (laughs) Team, right? I love stats like that. Okay, let's take out all just Power 5 schools, right? LSU's got 70 20-plus yard plays. The next best, USC at 59. It's just so it's too good to ignore. No, that's what I'm saying. Like there's there's no amount of context that will debunk the Jaden Daniels Heisman campaign. Basically, you just have to sit there and say, "Well, I want a guy on a winning team." And I'm like, well, it wasn't really Jaden Daniels' fault. He gave up 42, 45, right. and 55 points in losses. You know, what I mean. And, and by the way, the guys, the, the Michael Penix Jr. is undefeated. But guess what? His team six times failed to score enough points to win those games so there's an argument that if michael Penix jr had Jaden daniels defense he would have six losses right now um preston from from what Jaden daniels is accomplishing i know you're not an nfl gm a scout a head coach yeah all this translates right i mean this to me there's nothing that i'm watching that i i think i would be duped at the next level right yeah, especially the way he's improved with his deep ball and decision making in the pocket, uh, he's pr- he's improved tremendously. And I asked him about that after the game last week, and he's like, "Man, I've always been able to throw the deep balls, but it's more of like him actually taking those shots." Uh, and I think a bit of that is the improved offensive line and receiver play as well. But yeah, um, I, I, what he does is a little unorthodox. Uh, he throws a little off balance. Um, he, you know, he, he's definitely more, he, he's a big time scrambler and uses that to help him throw. Um, and you have to worry about that in the NFL with faster players and things of that nature. Um, I, I definitely understand why you would take a couple of the quarterbacks ahead of him. Uh-huh. Um, my thought is, okay, if I'm a team sitting at 32, I almost do not care what my setup, my situation is. <laughs> That guy's worth a pick at 32. I mean, I don't he ain't falling to the second round. There's I just don't see a guy that good not being worth a first rounder. So I'd be shocked. I've seen a couple mock drafts of him going as high as number six. Um, that's the highest I've seen him, but uh here is recent. He he definitely has been trending up. I, I I don't see a way he gets out of the first round. Give me some perspective on his receiver play. How good are these guys? How good are Thomas and Neighbors? Well, Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, is up for the Heisman Trophy right now, uh, or being talked about, I should say. And his numbers, I think he's got uh, 
12 touchdowns and like 1,084 yards, something like that. That actually more closely compares to Brian Thomas Jr., who actually has more t- uh, an extra touchdown than him and about 30, 40 less yards. I mean, he's not even the same stratosphere as Malik Neighbors at whatever he's got, like, you know, 1,300 yards or whatever. Yeah, they're good. They're really good. They're, they're you know, it, it'll be fun to look back in history and compare these guys. I mean, they're right up there. Odell Beckham Jr., Jarvis Landry. Um, they're right up there with uh, Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson. They're, they're definitely top three receiving duo in school history. Um, Preston, what do, you, what do you believe the future is for this offense as far as what will it be able to attract? We've seen um, Bryce Underwood, uh, yeah. Really, you know, a guy that I, I believe he, he would surprise people now if he doesn't come to LSU or commit to LSU on January sixth. Yeah. What What do you see the kind of the, the the fallout from this offense? Yeah, um, I think there's a lot of attraction to come here, especially to play under you know Joe Sloan, because quarterbacks are seeing this development of Jaden Daniels because Jaden Daniels wasn't the guy he is right now. I talked to Bryce Underwood's dad uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, and you know he went out of his way to make sure. I knew LSU was the front runner, hmm. um, which is not normal for recruits. So uh, I, I really like if L- and not to mention the other two schools people are looking at as options for Bryce Underwood have taken twenty twenty five quarterbacks. That's Colorado and Michigan. They they've both taken twenty twenty five quarterbacks. So if LSU um, botches this opportunity, I'd say something is you know they they screwed something up for sure <laughs> what, uh they 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 should land Bryce Underwood what did, um that go, go ahead. ahead no 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 go ahead finish that being said you've also got guys in this class you've got the number one receiver in the country already committed to Corey and Moore right and who else joined those two on their official visit to LSU a few weeks back i believe it was the Auburn game um None other than Harlem Barry, the New Orleans running back, five-star guy out of New Orleans, and he's a beast number one running back. So, I, yeah, I asked um, Bryce Underwood's dad if you know he was aware that LSU was in on. The, by the way, Harlem Barry is basically like, and I think his dad is like real tight with Frank Wilson. So yeah. if LSU screws up on on right. on him, that's that's no good, man. I, I, um, I believe legitimately, like Frank Wilson is his godfather. I mean, like, I think, yeah, like, legitimately I, I think yeah, he is. That's, yeah, I wanted to say that. I just couldn't remember if that was exactly, or maybe it was like I don't know, an uncle. Or I, right. yeah, it was like Godfather. Like, like you messed that up, man. <laughs> he done did something really wrong. Um. So, anyways, yeah, I talked to uh, Bryce's dad. Um, about that, I was like, are you aware LSU's got the number one receiver committed and the number one running back was on that visit with you? And he said, yeah, oh yeah, I'm aware of that. And I, I he said he was on the phone with Harlem Barry's dad. Mm. talking about that mm. so there's a really realistic chance that lsu lands the number one running back the number one receiver and the number one quarterback for 2025 <laughs> and i don't know that lsu's ever done anything like that uh on the on one side of the ball how fast do you expect them to act to try and bring the defense up to speed with an offense this good <sighs> I mean, as fast as you possibly can. I mean, probably wait till after the Texas A&M game, right? right? right. Yeah, I think <laughs> Saturday night, fast. though. I think Saturday night. Yeah, right. I, I think that you got to uh, – this needs a complete reworking. And we've had a long debate on our show uh, about whether it's coaching or players. I always make the argument when anything is historically good or historically bad, which this is um, probably a bottom – five defense all time for LSU. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got Lou Tepper and then you got uh the the Bo Pelini 2.0 and then this is right there with them, right? Uh it's not it's always multifaceted. Everybody wants it to be one issue. Well, let's just go to the portal and get better players or let's just fire Matt House and that'll fix our problems. It's it's usually multifaceted when it's this bad. It's usually a combination of all of it. So I expect some defensive staff reworking. We'll see if they clean house or if they, you know, just make a couple adjustments here and there. Do they just blame Jimmy Lindsay's, uh, you know, health uh, as the issue? I talked to Dave Bartu. Who uh, he 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 has college football matrix analytical is what he does and it's kind of like recruiting rankings for coaching except for he doesn't make it available to the public he sells it directly to the coaches right and he just talked about how this defensive staff ranks uh, and this is before the season before this awful season but the staff ranked in the bottom five of the power five right yeah, yeah. Um, not a good sign for a school I said how often do you see stuff like this for LSU he said never dude LSU's down there with schools like Nevada and New Mexico right now wow. So I mean, on budget I alone, say, they shouldn't be there. 
Right. Exactly. Exactly. They they definitely have the resources will and and will to 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 do better than that. And I asked them, how does that happen? And they, you know, they said, well, a lot of times, you know, you you hire a coordinator you like, and then you trust the coordinator to fill his staff out. And Matt House probably just wasn't all that connected, didn't know his guys, didn't have resources to find right people, and just kind of landed on, um, you know, some guys he was comfortable with. Is basically his answer. His words, not mine. Um, so I, I would say that there probably will be a lot of defensive staff reworking. Uh, they've got a strong recruiting class. They're bringing in a lot of DBs. They're bringing in. I can't wait to see Jawan Johnson uh, next year. I think he'll be a big help. Uh, do you bring in a guy like Texas A&M? You're, are you going to ransack their recruiting class now that Jimbo's fired? There's guys like Terry Bussey who could come out and help in a big way. Gabriel Relaford, the defensive lineman out of Shreveport committed to Texas A&M currently. Uh, do you ransack Texas A&M's talent? You should, being that they're, you know, your neighbor school in your division. A lot of these kids committing to Texas A&M, LSU was probably the runner-up. Uh, do you ransack that class and bolster talent? And then you're going to have to hit the portal, man. I mean, I know Brian Kelly wants to build in the recruiting class, and he should. That's how you build a consistent winning program is you get players from the ground up, you develop them, and you make them into a, a, a good team. But – I, you're going to have to go to the portal, man. I mean, they're, they're, this this defense is, you know, it, it's struggling. It, it needs guys, and you got to hit on guys. Um, I, I do think eventually you want to turn away from this rent-a-player program where, mm-hmm. you know, you go get guys from a smaller school and you put them in in one year and then they're done. That's not exactly a recipe for success. You want some continuity there, but you have to. I don't. I, don't, I think you've got so many holes to fill and, and 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 so many guys playing that really, you know, need to be developing right now and not, you know, re- being relied upon. Preston, give me a preview for Saturday before I get you out of here. Oh, LSU's nine and a half point favorites. Uh, take LSU minus whatever. I I, I think LSU is going to rally behind Jaden Daniels. The energy I've seen from fans and teams and stuff. Um, it's been pretty pretty exciting. It does remind me a little bit of that 2019 game where we just knew how special the game was going to be. We knew it was going to be a big win before kickoff, and somehow it was 10 times bigger than we thought it was going to be. Uh, I think this this stadium and team will rally behind Jaden Daniels. I, I think LSU wins comfortably. Uh, did, did, will the defense give up points? Of course, the defense gives up points to everybody, right? Um, but... Uh, I, I do think that that offense is going to get cooking and try to roll up numbers for Jaden Daniels because this is his last chance, his last showing to to earn the Heisman Trophy, and I, I suspect they're gonna they're gonna put on a show. Preston, tell our listeners where they can find you when the show airs and and where uh, where it's airing at. Sure, guys. Y'all can check us out on the Tiger Bait YouTube channel. My show with Zach Nagy, we do uh, just a football show every Monday night, 8 to 9 p.m. Uh, you can catch me and Mike Scarborough on the post game show about an hour after the game ends every week on the Tiger Bait YouTube channel. Y'all can check out my writing and recruiting updates on tigerbait.com. It's a premium recruiting service, but you can give it a try for $1. Um, and also on Twitter, guys, if y'all want to keep up, uh, I'm going to continue every time I see someone come at me with a weak take about why Jaden Daniels doesn't deserve the Heisman, at least until the Heisman ceremony. I'm going to continue um, going, you know. <laughs> going to take blows for my guy, man. Uh, So y'all go follow me on Twitter at PGuy underscore 77. And that's all the good spots to catch me, guys. Uh, Class has been in session. It uh, it has been uh, been fun to watch. Happy Thanksgiving. Tell Mike hello. We'll talk to you again soon. Will do. Happy Thanksgiving, y'all. All All right, there he is. uh, Preston Guy checking in here from Tiger Bait this morning. Conversation brought to you by Hughes Mechanical Contractors. Residential and commercial HVAC services, air-conditioned services that you can trust from our friends over at Hughes Mechanical. Tell Travis Hughes and the crew that you heard it right here on the Colada Show. You can call them this morning at 225-658-2147 or online at HughesMechanical.net. They're headquartered in Zachary. They get an office in Covington. They can help you all along the I-10 corridor here in South Louisiana, everywhere from the North Shore to Lafayette and in between. Get in touch with Hughes Mechanical Contractors. Online, HughesMechanical.net. Residential, commercial, HVAC services. The most trusted and experienced professionals that you can find here in South Louisiana. If you need maintenance, they can take care of that as well. They're a trusted Dykin dealer over at Hughes Mechanical. Online at HughesMechanical.net. 225-658-2147. Hughes Mechanical Contractors, proud supporter here of the Colada Show. We appreciate them 
uh, as always. Thanks to Preston Guy for stopping by here in the first hour. As uh, Look, I, I agree with, with, with Preston. I think LSU is going to have to make some hard line moves on, on some of these defensive guys here pretty early. Um, as far as the LSU A&M game goes on Saturday, uh, I, I do believe that this is going to be an emotional game for both sides. I mean, th- this this A&M game, I, I always, I don't want to discredit A&M because I know that they do look forward to this game and they do build it up as as one of the bigger games on their schedule. And I, I don't want to dis, you know, from LSU's standpoint, this is this is a big game. I mean, this is this is one that you 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 can't overlook uh, by any means uh, and take less serious than any others. Um, but but I do believe that LSU is sitting in a in a pretty good spot from you know not having any opportunities left to play in front of a national spotlight. Jaden Daniels playing for so much, the team playing for a tenth win and, and an opportunity to get there. I just believe that there is a lot for LSU emotionally to take into Saturday uh, that does feel like nine and a half points may not be enough uh, for, from from LSU's standpoint of of what Saturday's stage could potentially be for for Daniels for time you know for 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 LSU and for the program I do think it would have a bit of a like the 2019 A&M game felt like it was over before it even started that was one of those nights that you just felt like you had the reason like a a get back for 2018 when you go seven overtimes, you feel a little bit jaded. Then you look at the season LSU would put up. You have the what feels like the Heisman winner coming out the tunnel. Then you have that happen where he does the whole jersey thing. And before kick, that thing was already over. I don't know if it's to that degree of having LSU be able to kind of win the game before it's been played. But there is a sense of LSU has a little bit more to play for under whether it be the Jaden Daniels circumstance to maybe show out a little bit for what's on the other sideline. Be like, all right, this is kind of fun if you're in the stands, but all of that doesn't really hit the same for 11 a.m., I would say. Like, yeah. if you think about the 2019 Texas A&M game, a lot of that is because it's under the lights in Tiger Stadium, and you had a reason Burrow to get there. senior night. Right, and it's Jane Daniels' senior night, but it's going to be like senior. Those are just small things that I think make a difference for as far as the fan experience and what it looks like, because that 2019 game under the lights was, and you had to give people a chance to get back to Baton Rouge. If you're in, you know, doing Thanksgiving stuff, and it's, you look up and it's Friday afternoon, you're like, shit, I either have to leave now yeah. or I'm not going. Right. And I think that 11 a.m. kick is going to have the stadium not probably be the way that it should look for Jaden Daniels' last game in a Tiger uniform at home, which is unfortunate because I think he deserves, especially what happened last year and all of the kind of noise around if he should even be the starting quarterback to now you have the entire fan base pumping him to win a Heisman that he truly deserves. Yeah, no, it, it's there. There are some things going into a Saturday morning, eleven a.m. kick that you know you hope will will pull through uh, for LSU as far as you know getting everybody out there because that's you know that that's what that's what Daniels deserves really. That's what the program deserves. I think you know the offense obviously deserves that. And look, I think that you know from A and M standpoint, they have a very talented team coming in here. Yeah, hey, people forget. I mean, you, you, we we have overlooked. We have not talked about as much as good. As as A and M is, uh, especially defensively, right? I mean, especially defensively up front in the front seven, and, and I don't know how many people saw the news over the weekend, but we talk a lot about uh, Edgerin Cooper, who is the linebacker for Texas A and M. Uh, he's from Covington, Louisiana, and really playing the linebacking spot right now at as high of a level as college football has. I mean, he is a front runner. Uh, for the Butkus Award. He is in the discussion for the Bednarik Award. Uh, the Butkus obviously going to the top linebacker in college football. The Bednarik going to the top defensive player in college football. He's in that discussion and has had a fantastic season. I mean, a guy that has played at just a a, a consistent high level week in, week out. If you've watched AM consistently, number 45 jumps off for them from – a just defensive standpoint and he lost his girlfriend over the weekend tragically in an ATV accident and his girlfriend was somebody who was from College Station uh, was was very influential within the 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 university Uh, she was very well known liked respected on campus and throughout uh, Texas A&M's 
um, you know, just campus and, and, and around the school. Uh, and that was his, his girlfriend and she passed away over the weekend. And I just followed that on social media and found it on social media and, you know, following guys like Billy Lucci who cover A&M and even following Edgerin Cooper this year because of, you know, just being a fan of his and him being a South Louisiana kid from Covington. Um, you know, watching his success has been fun from afar. Obviously, having a chance to watch him play inside Tiger Stadium will will be cool this Saturday, but he'll be doing it with a very heavy heart, um, having the news that hit this weekend, this past weekend, of his, you know, his partner, his his girlfriend passing away from just a tragic accident. So, um, you know, keep the, the thoughts, obviously, and, you know, what they're going through at this time. Uh, at this time of Thanksgiving, what a what a terrible time for for her family and for for everybody going through that. And obviously, Edgerin Cooper, the linebacker who you know was 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 her boyfriend. So um, just you know, kind of following that on social media, it will be an emotional game uh, for for some of the 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 players from A and M coming back or coming here. Uh, to LSU this past weekend, and, and they will have you know a lot of guys coming back. Le'Veon Moss, a running back, is from Astruma in Baton Rouge. Obviously, Jacoby Matthews will make his first play uh, and first time in Tiger Stadium. Is Moss out for the season? I think he is out uh, uh, with a foot injury. Mm. Um, but you're talking Edgerin Cooper, obviously from from Louisiana, and there's you know Jordan Gilbert from Baton Rouge who went to University High. I mean this is a, a roster that has a lot of Louisiana kids and some Louisiana kids um you know that that are committed as as we mentioned Gabe Relliford, the big defensive tackle from Evangel, uh Dominic McKinley, uh, the defensive tackle from here in South Louisiana. I mean they've got Louisiana talent uh, obviously paying a ton of attention to what they're doing in College Station. All right, so we'll talk uh we'll talk more about uh this. We'll talk some more uh, about uh, LSU and A&M. Uh, we'll also change the conversation up a little bit to LSU basketball, both men's and women's. When Jacques Doucet comes through here in the second hour, uh, we appreciate you being here in the first hour. Um, I, I think we're getting some reports that Moss may be back. Uh, he might not be out for the season. Uh, that he played that last injury week. Look it did ugly. look bad. I guess. So. Uh, but I wonder he if last week. I wonder if Evan Stewart plays. They said he wasn't going to travel, he, but you yeah, don't know. I don't think he is. Uh, yeah, at this point, I don't. Uh, that's that's he, probably his decision. Yeah, I was, I was, I yeah think he's, he's probably opt out. I'm out. Dog. I mean, you're about to see opt out week here. Yeah, you know, what I mean, and, next week. I mean, like, let's say uh, Michigan, like uh, Michigan loses to Ohio State and they go to the Orange Bowl, which mm-hmm. is kind of like the de facto, like get out of here bowl. Like, I mean, I'd imagine their whole team would probably. Yeah, I, I saw. Like, I think it was 24 seven put out something like opt outs, like the projected opt outs. Yeah, I mean, it's and, a, it's and it was it was a lot of LSU tangent on there too. I bet. Um, they probably don't want him to come to Baton Rouge. No. <laughs> Evan Stewart, they're probably just like, yeah, you, oh, yeah. yeah don't, yeah, right, yeah. I, don't I mean, go watch those. It's, it's an unofficial us. visit. Right. <laughs> You're uh, the wrong sideline coach. We'll be back hour two after this. Hit that like button, share button, comment button. Real quick message from our friends over at Barker Brothers. Barker Brothers right now. Uh, Barker Brothers Plumbing and Works. Uh, you can find them, obviously, uh, on West Baton Rouge, East Baton Rouge. Two trucks here daily working on East Baton Rouge. Get in touch with Barker Brothers Plumbing and Works. We'll be back. Hour two next. Circumstances start to change and they jump in the ship. Only ones that really matter who's tied the hip. They tried to push it to the side because they thought you were quick. If you're in the market for a mortgage lender, you need to start with Doug Bickley and his team. Bickley has built a crew with over 50 years of combined lending experience. They've been in business for over 20 years and they love helping their clients achieve the American dream of home ownership. They're also key with working in real estate agents and helping their clients getting same day pre-approval. They average about one buyer a day getting them in a home. If you want to get in touch with Doug and his crew, it's easy. Call them 225-214-5154. 225-214-5154. Go see the Bickley team today. They're located on the corner of Corsi Boulevard and Sherwood Forest right here in Baton Rouge. What's up? What's happening? Chilling with a couple of cool guys. You? Chilling and watching some tube. <laughs> Hold on. Did you do it? Hold on. Did you do it? Rosa. Rosa. Hold on. Rusa? Rusa! Rusa! Hold on. Ah. Hold on. Ah. Hold on. Ah. Hold on. Ah.
beautiful roof every single time. True. True. At Auctioner, we know healing is a team sport. That's why we've partnered with world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. James Andrews, to create the Auctioner Andrews Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, our team of specialists are dedicated to getting you back in the game. So whatever your reasons are for reaching your personal best, we've only got one, you. Auctioner Andrews Institute, long live you. Head health is incredibly important for our student athletes. One of the best ways we're trying to address concussions is on the front end. We're trying to prevent these before they happen. And a big part of that is speaking to the athletes, letting them know what to expect. Okay, speaking to the parents, what to look out for, talking to the coaches so they know the vital importance. Some of the big things we're looking for with the concussion, which is, you know, a traumatic brain injury is one. Was there a mechanism? Was there an injury that took place that could lead to this? Often a direct blow to the head, a head-to-head -head hit. If someone's showing signs of concussion, our first step is always to remove them from activity, get them to a place where there's less stimuli, where we can really just sit down and get a feel for the athlete, what they're feeling. We're looking for headache, we're looking for dizziness, any sign that coordination is off, that something's just not right, get a good evaluation them to understand what's going on. It's not worth the risk that may be there to kind of ignore it, because there are very serious consequences if we don't treat a concussion properly. Don't let concerns about shifts in the market disrupt your long-term financial goals. Edward Jones Financial Advisor Daniel Newman can help. He'll work with you on an investment strategy for long-term results. Edward Jones can give you the tools and knowledge for a steady approach to hitting your financial targets. Get started today by calling Daniel Newman at 225-261-8262, 225-261-8262. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Click Here Digital, the home of the Jordy Collada Show. Online at clickheredigital.com, if you're looking to set Google ads, set social media campaigns, learn about SEO, display video, or even creative, Click Here Digital has the answer for you. Online at clickheredigital.com or email me directly, Jordy at clickheredigital.com. When you return to rare form, they all gonna be sick. You ever seen a living legend? Just know that I'm me. Slow grind like IT, just know that I'm me. Now I'm back up in my bag, I'm giving them fits. Bounce a bat like John Morant, you know that I'm lit. Making plays like Jack Bash, I'm never gonna sit. Had to be patient, so I waited for the situation. Now that I'm focused, I'ma take it with no hesitation. The hard times that I hated gave me inspiration. Look in the eyes from my kids, gave me motivation. Bounce back, can't let you fold up. Keep pushing, can't let you slow up. Bounce back, can't let you fold up. Keep pushing, can't let you slow up. Bounce back, can't let you fold up. Keep pushing, can't let you slow up. Bounce back, can't let you fold up. Keep pushing, can't let you slow up. Welcome in to a Tuesday, Wednesday edition of the Jordy Colada Show here. Hour two, getting going live here from our Click Here Digital campus. Remember, over here at Click Here Digital, we can help you out with all your digital marketing plans from setting your Google ads to your social media ads to helping you with your content. All of that you can find online at clickheredigital.com or email me directly, Jordy at clickheredigital.com. Appreciate you all being here every morning with us, especially here on this Wednesday morning, a uh, pre thanksgiving day show here for you from uh from click here digital so if you don't mind hit that like button share button comment but if you haven't subscribed subscribe before we get out of here at 9 a.m always look forward to our wednesday conversations with one of our favorites jacques Ducey, who's now the sports director over at wafb9 sports and it has been a very eventful week of <laughs> of covering south louisiana sports and nobody does it better than our friends over at nine make sure you're following them on WAFB and their YouTube channel and all over social media and Jacques a great follow there as well. I saw somebody pulled 
Uh, was it ESPN Women pulled a video from you earlier this week of, of uh, Kim Mulkey press conference, I believe? I, I saw yeah. some of your work on a, on a national stage that had like 300,000 hits <laughs> on it. Uh, good to see you. Happy Thanksgiving. Oh, thanks. I'm just blessed to be working in a market where we make national news all the time, we yeah, meaning the teams yeah. we cover. So right. I'm just uh, – I get to feed the, the filet mignon. People <laughs> like to chew it up, you know. So. It is uh, – it's been a hell of a time for, for our industry. Yours – you know, in particular, who's bringing this into living rooms. Well, I'm thinking, you know, um, LSU women's basketball, right? And Skip Burtman, when he first took over baseball at LSU, said, uh, look, uh, the good news is nobody cares, and the bad news is nobody cares, <laughs> right? And so now for LSU women's basketball, the good news is everybody cares, and the bad news is everybody cares. And so on a Monday night in which you're playing a team from the SWAC, I realize that, uh, you know, the announce attendance has uh, figures into – what were we pointing at? Uh, I was, I was, oh, oh Jaden Daniels and yeah. Joe Burrow compares. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you No, off. no, I, I, it's, it's fine. I'm sure he has some ADD whenever that team he goes to LSU. His eyes wander a little bit. I thought you were calling on somebody in the crowd, you know. Who's <laughs> been here the latest? Identify yourself and what's your name? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, you're Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, look, Glenn, I, I get along great with Glenn, and I need to do my job and ask questions. Yeah. You know, I, I kind of gave myself a, a, a pep talk afterwards. Like, hey, look, you need to, you know, I, I, if I get chewed up and spit out on Tiger droppings, it won't be the first. It won't nah. be the last. You know, Don't you got about do- those losers. Jock, they talk about us every day. Right. You, you got to do your job. Right. So Glenn jumped on the grenade. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody in the room. And I've been there before. In which, you know, I've asked the question and heard the people grumbling around me and that guy, you know. And everybody used it. That's mm-hmm. right. You know, that, right. you know like, oh, that guy, I'm right. glad he asked, can put that quote in my article. So, I said the same thing. Put it on TV. He asked exactly, exactly what everybody was curious about. I've, I've been curious if she's practicing or not. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I've, been, I've been wondering if she's been practicing. Glenn was, he was pushing on that. I mean, like, he did, he did so ask. So is she <laughs> practicing or not? You know, he's like, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you, Glenn, but I mean, he kept asking. Yeah. That, and, that's the debate. I mean, uh, and just to finish what I was saying, you got a crowd of over 10,000 on a Monday night to see you play Texas Southern women's basketball. And in the past, I know from our, our perspective covering it, we probably go spray down the first half, say LSU won 61-45. to 45. There's no need for a post-game press, co- uh, press conference video or soundbite right. from Nikki Fargus or a player. And now you've got an ESPN writer there on a Monday night. Wow. You've got a room full of media. Uh, and, and all this interest, and so Gilbo's uh, first time. Uh, he was that. Uh, I'm not even try, taking a shot. I'm saying like that's it's what yeah. it's bringing out. You and know he's I mean? not a women's beat writer, right? You know, so he right. was assigned to that. He's doing his job. Look, there's a lot of fan interest in this. You need to go to that. He was there in Hammond on Friday too, I think. But uh, you know, I've gone through Angel Reese's last game that she played against Kent State. And uh, I'm sure that maybe Mulkey or Coach Mulkey or her staff might be able to explain, you know, and I'm looking too much into something. But early in the game, I think it was at the nine-minute mark of the first quarter, Angel Reese takes a three-pointer. It bangs off the rim. Mm-hmm. I, I, I was shooting. You can see Mulkey on the bench the second the shot is missed. Point at somebody and do this. Get her out. I think it was Samaya came in. Late in the first half, I think there's – a minute, 40 seconds left. Reese takes another long shot. It's not a three, but she's inside the arc by not much. She makes it. There's a foul. Uh, Haley Van Lith commits a foul. It wasn't Reese because I looked that up. Okay, was that her third foul? And then once again, Mulkey takes her out and puts in uh, Moro, I think. Uh-huh. And so I'm wondering at halftime, do they have a conversation where Mulkey says, hey, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you're trying to expand your repertoire or put another club in your bag, so to speak. But you're not shooting long-range shots. And I don't know if there was some pushback and there was a little back and forth and maybe a little disrespecting of the coach. That's a guess. I don't think it's academic, as you said. And maybe at Christmas time, or does she have bad grades once the semester ends? I don't know. But, um, you know. I can assure you, it's not academics. Yeah. I mean, one thing that LSU, it would be like LSU losing Jaden Daniels. I could, that, that, that would never happen. That would never happen. I mean, the John Emery thing was so, it was so freaky because it just never happens. I mean, you never hear of a starting running back academically being ineligible. I had a former LSU football player when that happened tell me, 
You know how hard it is to be academically <laughs> ineligible? Like it is. I mean, you have to try. You really do. <laughs> and, if, and if you're somebody like Angel Reese, it's nearly impossible. It re- and I don't mean that. Right. Like, she, she probably does her schoolwork and goes to class, but, like, there's no way right. that she would be Coach Mulkey, academic. uh, Angel's academic. You know, okay, that's fine. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, right. You're fired. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's how that would work. So, I mean, it's yeah. not academics. Yeah. And there's been some crazy stuff out there uh, in terms of why she's not playing. So, you know, there's a debate out there. Is LSU better off if Kim Mulkey just steps up and says – Angel Reese is suspended because she broke a team rule and she has benchmarks to hit and she won't be back until she hits them. Is she better off saying that? I don't know. I mean, that's not, I'm never going to, you know, it's not my place, a coach that's won four national championships and won like 90% of her games as the head coach. Uh, Kim Mulkey is a very polarizing figure. We, this is not breaking news. I think she's damned if she does, damned if she doesn't. That's if she right. does that, then it's, oh, you're, airing, you're throwing her under the bus and airing her, her laundry. And then with this, it's like, oh, you're opening things up and letting people run rampant with speculation. So in the old days, I say the old days, three, four years ago, nobody would really care. Now you're a f- it's you're, front page news. It's, you, you're front page news. Uh, you know, it's Angel Reese does this with the meter. You know, everyone reads that stuff, and they're all interested. People who didn't care about women's basketball care now, and so and that's where you at. And look, uh, if Jaden Daniels didn't show up to play Texas A and M, there'd be questions about <laughs> that. Where is he? Or Brian Thomas or Malik Neighbors? Where is he? You know, <laughs> could Coach Mulkey just say he's inactive, like uh, Deuce Chestnut and uh, Denver Harris? With the team, say say she's inactive. <laughs> so I, uh, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's all – and look, and here's another conversation. Does the uh, – now, look, if I was an LSU women's basketball fan, I think you got entertained pretty good on Monday night. The team scored 106 points, and they looked very good. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you're a season ticket holder and you bought season tickets, do you say, hey, look, I paid to see Andrew Reese. Where is she? I'd like a, an answer on that. So right now, November, it, 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 can, it can float. But if she's not out there when you're playing top ten – Virginia Tech next Thursday, a week from Thanksgiving, then, ooh, what's going on here? Right. Yeah, no, I agree. It, it, it's something. It, it definitely is. And I, I don't think Melky's going to budge. You know, she's not, she's not budging on this. And Well, at this point, you can't. Right. She, she's got her feet. She, yeah, she's, she's dug in, too. Yeah, she's, she's dug in. Um, what, what, have, what have you made of this LSU football stories as now we're coming down here? The, the, I mean – Brian Kelly's obviously politicking for his players. I mean, they're now going into award season with heavy favorites in in areas that have big time repercussions in recruiting if they're able to pull off some of these these awards. Well, we've Channel Nine. We've booked our flight and hotel to New York City. Wow, we're going. Hell yeah! <laughs> so I think it's safe to say he's going to be a finalist. Yeah, uh, Jaden. And so um, and yeah, I thought that was. I mean, for for Coach Kelly to take it even a step further. And say, hey, if Marvin Harrison, if someone's saying he's a finalist for the Heisman, then Malik and uh, Brian Thomas should be also. I thought that was, uh, you know, a pretty big step. And look, the LSU's big team goals are off the table. So this is what is most interesting now. Can Jaden become LSU's second Heisman Trophy winner in five years uh, at, at the quarterback spot? <laughs> That's crazy. That was the program was viewed as a quarterback killer a graveyard for years. Uh, can he do that? Um, and then, you know, the Blitnikoff Award, uh, I vote on that award, too. Uh, I got the, you know, we voted, the deadline was on Sunday night, and they put out the 10 uh, semifinalists on Monday. I think I joke with you, I'm supposed to pick 10 of these guys. I can't even, like, name 10 players. Uh, right. <laughs> you know, they, they, they uh, provide you all receivers. the <laughs> 10 stats, they, all, all the numbers and stuff. So, look, whether or not, uh, you know, Brian Thomas has had an amazing you know, his first two years, he was a solid receiver. I think he had, I don't know, 700 yards combined his first two years. Now he's over 1,000, leads the nation in touchdowns. Um, you know, it's been a huge deep threat, and Malik continues to amaze you with his catch and run. I mean, he ca- he catches passes. It seems like there's four guys around him. He just spins out mm-hmm. and goes. So, yeah, I mean, you know, and it's going to be disappointing. You don't want to be the negative, uh, the negative Nancy, but you're going to say, man – this offense was undercut by a defense that if it was C plus, C minus, this team could have gone to some better places. Yeah, without question. I, I mean, I was 
talking to Wilson Alexander yesterday, I mean, the, the, the beat followers, the beat writers like Wilson, LSU football beat like nine sports, I believe it's going to be a very busy week next next week. I, I think that's what college football schedule has presented to administrators. It's it look, transfer portal opens up on December fourth, early signing period come up in mid December. You've got to be stable with who you are from an identity standpoint to go sell your message. LSU very unstable right now on the defensive side. I, I believe they try to stabilize themselves over the next you know uh, ne- next week or yeah. so. Well, you and I were joking. Uh, before we came on the year, uh, I saw Matt Canada got fired yesterday. And I, I remember in 2017, Coach O's first year, the report was that Brian Canada was gonna, uh, Matt Canada was going to be fired. And they took him to the bowl game. He coached that's, in the bowl right. game. Against Kelly. Against Brian Kelly at Notre Dame. <laughs> that's right. And he shows up, and he's there. And, and we asked Coach O, we're, we're in Orlando, Coach, uh, what's Matt Canada's status? He's the coach for this game. <laughs> and that's all he would say. And uh, well, what about after this? He's the coach for this game. And so, you know, I, what they got on the well, the one-inch line late, and they kicked a field goal, and then Notre Dame hit a long touchdown. It was a cold, rainy day. So I don't. Th- the point of that is, I don't think LSU's going to take a coach to a bowl game who's going to be out. That was the uh, we coming press conference. What? It was the same year. Okay. It was the Alabama game okay, okay, in Tuscaloosa. Okay. I thought that was the bowl game, like kind of like going into the off season of. Week. No, it was. Uh, remember the Alabama it was after the Alabama game? They yeah, lost twenty four to ten. Mm-hmm. Right. But you know they had kind of. I think they outgained Alabama, and they yeah. were supposed to get killed. They That's were like right. a twenty four point underdog. That's right. And they hung in there, and it was kind of like Alabama limped to the finish line. Right. You know, they still won by two touchdowns. But they, Arden Key had a big like he was killing. Quarter, he had like big quarterback sacks that night. I mean, they were making plays where you're like, they were competitive. Wow. Early, they, 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 LSU took their shots. Etling like threw like five deep passes. Like they were chunking it. And he was either a little underthrown. Mm-hmm. It was he a hit little. DJ uh, Chark one time. Yeah. Chark dropped one, I think. And right. they just could not hit any. Uh, the one play, they put Daryl Williams in the That's Wildcat. Right. That's right. And, and he, he broke, broke it. it. And I, all of us were like, because we've been watching LSU for it felt like 20 Just, years, cannot get any first downs against Alabama. Yeah. And he broke it. We're like, holy cow, look, he's going. Did he get tackled at the one? Mm-hmm. Got tackled. That's right. And then I forgot who scored. It might have been he him. Did. Yeah, they, he did. But yeah, this they, is the same game where it's just when Coach O went down the, the Tiger Walk and he was – Pretty animated. No, no, that one was in Tuscaloosa. That was in Tuscaloosa? Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, when he got animated, the Tiger Walk was 18. That 18, was 18, yeah. The next year. And that was when Burrow had the separated shoulder during that week. I mean. That that was when I told myself to never get caught up in hype right. again. That's right. Because it was a beautiful day. It the was. team came down the it hill. Was. Coach O was in full. pro. Was the day. <laughs> he was full. He was in full professional wrestling. He was. He was banging his chest. He was doing uppercuts, the crowd all around him. He's just, <laughs> he was going to the side, high-fiving. I mean, it was it was why It was WWE. And it was a beautiful day. You're like, today's the day. Today is <laughs> That's the right. day. That's they, right. They had all these former players coming down the hill, Leonard Fournette, Patrick Peterson. Uh, you know, they were all there, and uh, and the game started. And uh, I, I – um, the linebacker Jacob Phillips. That's right. I asked him. I said, "What was the what was the best atmosphere you ever played in?" I thought he was going to say LSU Florida 2019 because that was like perfect. He goes, "Man, the beginning of that <laughs> Alabama game in 2018 was the loudest, and it was on 11. It was, but you know, I think Alabama's first drive they marched down the field. Didn't they hit two a late maybe? And they thought he was hurt. And uh, anyway, it was 20 29 nothing. Yeah, it, it, it was. It was never close." Yeah. It was never close. They hit Irv Smith for a touchdown, which is like yeah. turning the knife. He's New, from New Orleans. New Orleans. That's right. Uh, LSU even tried a field goal late to get on the board, and Cole Tracy, who had been great all year, he missed it. It was like mm-hmm. a chip shot. That's right. Um, I, I just remember just that game, just the, the just the empty feeling of, uh, of all of that uh, and being shut out. One thing that nobody remembers probably that Darren and I joke about is that Mac Jones got put in the game to kneel. And he kneeled, and then he got up and he put a little, like he kneeled it, and he got up and he flicked the ball, like he was putting some some yeah. extra on his kneel down, like he was putting that little little extra yeah. sass on it, right. like look at this guy, you know, he's being brought in <laughs> to done. kneel, and he's <laughs> pimping <Matt> it. <laughs> Who's this bum? <laughs> 
And I remember they only dropped in the polls like two or three spots. That LSU team got a lot of respect in the polls that year, that 2018 yeah. team, because they got blanked like 29 to nothing, as we talked about, and they went from like four to seven or mm-hmm. something. And so – Had uh, that Georgia win. Yeah, the Georgia, Georgia win. And well, that they, was a 7-0-T game mm. against A&M. They beat four teams that year that were ranked in the top ten when they played them. Miami, mm. Auburn, Georgia, Central Florida in the bowl game. Damn. So they, they, they had a, so it a good team. Early. That Auburn win was – that was the, big. That was the that was a moment. Yeah, that, that was, that was the like, catalyst of what maybe what could be for the LSU football team because you lose right. that one. Yeah. Well, and I remember Devin White being like, when he was leaving, he was like, "I don't want to leave because I know how Special. great next year is going to be." And you're like, "Man, yeah. how how good? I mean, Devin, you're going to be a top five pick. Devin, I mean, like your generational money, you got to go, go, man." Dog. He's like, "No, I, mean, I don't." <laughs> I don't want to go. go. Well, that Fiesta Bowl, if you attach that Fiesta Bowl to the 2019 season, it looks the same. It makes sense. Because I think Burrow threw for almost 400, and they were airing it out. Jamar Chase came touchdown. Yeah. They they were like, okay. Right. You know, uh, that that became – that started looking like the offense that they were in 2019. But to Lloyd's point, uh, you know, they lost – that was the uh, A&M, you know, seven seven overtime. In the Florida – and was it in the Swamp? They they lost the pick late, yeah. Big six and uh, the and then the Alabama. Those were your three losses that year. But this could be similar to that if LSU can win this last game and win a bowl game. Uh, I don't know if they can finish in the top ten, but they could be knocking on it. They're they're fourteen right now. So uh, and then it's a matter of who plays in the bowl game. I think LSU hit the jackpot last year in terms of the players that played in the bowl game. This year, Jaden, what decision does he make? Malik, Brian Thomas, those guys. Uh, so is it is it an audition for Garrett Nussmeyer? To, to say, hey, look, are you ready to lead this team? Uh, and who else is going to be around him? So, we'll see. Yeah, it feels like a pivot point early on for Kelly, right? Like, going into year three, he's even kind of mile-marked year mm-hmm. three. You know what I mean? He's kind of been, been like, hey, look, grade me and analyze us in year three. And, I mean, for all intents and purposes, year three starts Saturday. I mean, I expect LSU to have a lot of opt-outs for the bowl. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's not going to mean a lot. You know, you could potentially be a you know a three loss team. You could be potentially a four loss team, depending on what happens on Friday on Saturday. I mean, I don't expect them to have a lot of buy in for the bowl. So really, the off season begins Saturday night, and I think you know year three for Brian Kelly. He's called down the critics for year three, and so here it is. You know, I mean, it's a big point. In so the- by Sunday afternoon, do, do we have? Coaches has Bless a leak you. that coaches have been uh, released on the defensive side of the ball. I, I would I would expect Jock that you will probably start to hear rumors in the press conference Saturday after the game, and you could have something coming across your wire Saturday night in the in the in the nine sports room. That's just speculation, I, I, but just uh, college football's calendar makes you do that. Yeah, you know, what I mean, like there's signing no, day used to be February fourth, fifth. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's a ways off. No time to spare. Now with the transfer portal and, and, and also retention. You know, we're yeah. talking about going out and getting guys. You got to keep the guys you have, right? Like, I mean, yeah. you got to sell to Sean Womack. You got to sell. I mean, I'm sure Whit Week's a little aggravated after the last month. You got to sell Tavian. I mean, like, you know, like, hey, guys, I mean, because somebody's on the phone with them. Somebody's on the phone with – you know, I mean, are we great? Whit Weeks is fan. They're from Georgia. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you don't think somebody has a relationship? Somebody's texting. Somebody's calling. I mean, Taviano's from Texas. Yeah. You know, I mean, that, I think- that was interesting. I mean, I, you know, pick your battles, and I, you know, all these coaches of these big time programs, they bend the truth and everything. But that, I did not expect that answer about Whit Weeks a gash on the foot. Yeah. So uh, that's what happened. That's what happened. You uh, asked the question, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. I. I I did. <laughs> right. No, and look, we so, look, we get we get we get barbecued inside the chat for not asking questions, and it's fair. I mean, it's fair for people. To, oh, you're, you're you're so emotional in the microphone. Why don't you ask a question? And I mean, you know, I mean, it, it is a, it's a fair question. But I mean, for someone in your position, I mean, I think well, you, you know, have the, kind the, of been that person that has said, look, I I have a responsibility. You yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you try to, you try to, and timing has a lot to do with it uh-huh. too. I mean, I, I don't think that it does anybody any good to go to a press conference and demand or, sure. or to fire Matt House. Uh, you know, at this point, well, USC did it. Well, what good does that do? Okay, who's going to run the defense now? 
And you can't change the defense in the middle of the season. Maybe you can get more aggressive, and maybe you can play the better players if that's the case, if they're not playing the, the best players or this and that. But, I mean, in terms of overhaul changes, you know, the, the question about that comes after this A&M game. You know, and if they, you know, I don't want to say, if they lose this game because they give up a bunch of points to a third-string quarterback – to end the regular season, then, then yeah, then it's like, okay, your personnel, are you going to make changes on the defensive side of the ball? And if you look at Kelly, and they're going to make decisions. I guess the media and fans can influence things, especially if you're Scott Woodward and you're asking fans to buy season tickets again. You can't perhaps say, hey, you know, put up the money for the TAF and this and that, and we're bringing back the same defensive coordinator. That that might be a problem. Yeah. But at the end of the day, the coach, and the, they're going to make the decisions they, they want to make. And I always go back to Paul Maneri's last year. Uh, I think LSU started 1-8, and eight, and the mob was out. They were out. It was nasty. You're not asking the questions. You're not blah, blah, blah. And I tried to, you know, try to ask the questions without being an angry mob and, and being professional. And at the end of the day, we had no influence on that. It all played out. Coach Maneri retired. They did everything that they wanted to do, and, and it, it takes place. So I think it's the same thing here. I think it's all – there's no way that Coach Kelly looked – he looked at special teams last year and said, oh, yeah, that's good. We're, we're, we're keeping Brian Polian in the same spot. And at the same time, I don't think there's any way he looks at the defense and says, yeah, that's good. We're going we're gonna to bring back the same coaches. So, um, you know, Madhouse, uh, you know, the, you, you hear things about who plays. It has, does it have something to do with NIL, too? Did they promise this guy that? And so, but, yeah, you're right. I think there's going to be a lot that's going to happen over the next, uh, you know, week. For sure. Yeah, it'll be a flurry. It'll be a flurry, I think, on uh, on Saturday. All right, so what's coming up on the desk? What's coming up on Nine Sports? I mean, you got a lot of stuff coming up here over the next couple of days. Yeah, uh, I think Emory Jones today is going to be uh, feeding the homeless at a, uh, at a St. Vincent's DePaul stop. Um, I think we're going to go out and check and get get that. You know, Thanksgiving is always that holiday. It's kind of like, all right, get together, and okay, we got to get, get back to work, right. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Friday, you've got – Quarterfinal high school football playoff games. They always say if you're playing on after Thanksgiving, you've had a great season. And so we've got those games, Sports Island, Friday night at 10 15. Uh, the Bayou Classic is taking place Saturday, Southern and Grambling. The loser of that one finishes with a losing record overall. And then obviously LSU Brighton early at 11 a.m., uh, playing uh, Texas A&M. Women's basketball is going to uh, Cayman Classic, right? Yep. Cayman Islands. Cayman Islands. So they're going to play a couple of games. Uh, there. Um, and so, yeah, there's a lot going on. I think the men's basketball team has a home game uh, on Friday. They've stabilized themselves a bit after the Nichols disaster. I thought so. Charleston was a, was a positive. That was positive. I mean, leaving with the win, OT, Wake Forest, that was a nice win. Yeah, it's nice too bad win. they couldn't have won the Dayton game, too. Yeah. I mean, they had a big lead in that one. So, so yeah, it's early. We'll see how they do. But, yeah, there's a lot of sports going on right now. And, um, uh, be sure to, uh, you know, John, uh, Kevin Baptiste and John Eads are doing a great job in our new reconfigured sports department. So here we go. Uh, Jacques, just uh, thank you. Uh, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Appreciate what you do for our show, man. Coming out every Wednesday. And I know driving across town and fighting traffic is not the easiest <laughs> thing to do on Wednesday mornings. But our, our listeners and our audience very much appreciate it. We very much appreciate our time here with you. We don't have... Uh, you know, a, a 15 minute block. We usually keep you for about 30 minutes here and you don't have, um, you don't have any, any pushback Balls. on it ever. It's, it's always awesome. And we just want to tell you during uh, Thanksgiving. We appreciate, oh, I appreciate it. it. This is a great show you guys have built here. Great studio. And uh, I, I go, when I've gone to Omaha or Dallas or going out of town to cover LSU, I, I've been stopped before many times and said, oh, you're Jacques Doucet. From the Jordy Collada show. <laughs> so That's right. You're welcome, JD. <laughs> exactly. exactly. That's awesome. We appreciate everybody being out there. We'll be back. More of the show after this. Hour two, rolling on R&B Builders. Hey, Tino. Cut my headphones up, bro. Red Stick Sports, a local staple in Baton Rouge to all sports fans, was founded back in 1981 and has remained a family business for over 40 years. Today, they still have the great selection on the floor, but they're also a leader in custom apparel for businesses. 
sports teams, and other groups. Take it from us, everybody over here at FM Digital Media. They help us out with all of our apparel. Let them help you out today. Go ask for Cody over at Red Stick Sports. Check him out online at redsticksports.biz. The Journey Collada Show is brought to you by A Bears Lawn Maintenance. Commercial or residential, A Bears Lawn Maintenance is ready to work. A Bears can tackle all your homeowners association requirements. Call Blake at 225 485 8022. A Bears Lawn Maintenance. In a wreck, Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys is ready to go to work for you. Come meet your team. I'm your intake specialist. I coordinate your case and connect you with your attorney and paralegal. That's us, your legal team. Thanks. And we'll fight to get you every dollar you deserve. I'm your settlements and disbursement manager, and I'm here to get you paid on time. I'm attorney Gordon McKernan. Put our team to work today. Just call us. Get it done. Hey, Tiger fans, when you're traveling through Natchez, Mississippi, make sure to visit Tom and Wright Granning at Go Mart and On The Go Deli, where you can fill up your tank and your belly. Go Mart has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you may need on your trip. Located at 4 Sergeant Prentice Drive as you're entering Natchez on the left. Also stop by Wardo's Po' Boys at 309 North Broadway on the beautiful Natchez Bluff, where the Po' Boys are so good you'll swear you're in Cajun country. At Auctioner, we know healing is a team sport. That's why we've partnered with world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. James Andrews, to create the Auctioner Andrews Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, our team of specialists are dedicated to getting you back in the game. So whatever your reasons are for reaching your personal best, we've only got one, you. Auctioner Andrews Institute, long live you. All right, buddy. Make yep. it a good shot. Oh, yeah. Sticking the roof in. Hey, Greg, the roof up. Roos up! Roos up! Roos up! Roos up! Roos up! Roos up! Beautiful roof every single time. True. True. Well, the Oscars Andrews Sports Medicine Institute collaborative effort uh, was uh, an idea from Dr. Andrews and myself to bring together two great names, the Andrews name and the Oscar name, to elevate the quality of care for athletes in the state of Louisiana, where he's from, I always thought I would come back to Louisiana and practice orthopedics with my subspecialty being sports medicine. This was an opportunity through Oshners to come back and work the entire state to help develop and take sports medicine to a new level. As an orthopedic surgeon, what this means in the future in terms of you know, access for our community to the type of care that Dr. Andrews pioneered, words can't describe how valuable that is. Oshner has a great opportunity here to, to really grow, and Dr. Burnham, of course, is the mainstay of making that happen. If you want to have first-class sports medicine care, check in with Dr. Burnham and his group, and you'll be more than impressed and pleased. I'm Tom Granick with Gil Martin, Wardo's Po' Boys in Natchez, Mississippi. On behalf of the Granick family, we invite you to run, walk, or stroll in the second annual Rudolph Roll. Held on the beautiful Natchez Bluff, this holiday event will kick off at 8 a.m. on December 9th and will include a 10K, 5K, and one-mile kids fun run. Along with the race, there will be live music, drinks, and of course, po'boys. We're looking forward to an even bigger party this year. For more information, please check out the link on Wardo's Facebook page or scan the QR code. Hope to see y'all there.
From Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys. <laughs> Twas the night before Christmas, and in every Louisiana house, all the creatures were stirring. Santa's coming. Even the mouse. The stockings were hung, the cookies were out. Santa was on his way to Louisiana, there was no doubt. So let's celebrate the season and start the new year off right. Merry Christmas to all, and to all, a good night. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Okay, Gordon, ready to talk a little bit about yourself today? Okay, good. <laughs> Tell us, who is Gordon McCurdy? Great question. In a lot of ways, I'm just like most people. I'm a husband. I'm a father. I'm a son. I am a brother. I'm a Christian. I am a Tigers fan. I am a Louisiana sportsman. But above all, I am grateful to the people of Louisiana. We want to be your lawyers for life. Hi, I'm Gordon McKernan. Everyone has a special Christmas memory. One of mine is when I woke up on Christmas morning, ran down the stairs, and there it was, a brand new red bicycle. That is why this Christmas, Gordon McKernan is giving away over 425 bicycles throughout the state of Louisiana. To register, please fill out a form online at gordongives.com or getgordon.com. And make sure to visit the Get Gordon Facebook page for additional details and chances to win. From all of us here at Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys, Merry Christmas and God bless. Yeah, right there. Now I'm focused on getting deposits. Evil in the way, now I'm just driving around it. They said I need the soul searching, I already found it. I unlocked my other side, now I'm sounding astounded. Drive by and let it ride like I'm whipping a Tesla. Pressure never fades me, cause I'm bigger than pressure. I'm on my grind, bullshit. Can't fit on my schedule. I'ma do what's best with me, you can keep all your lectures. Spend the summer stacking bread, might be gone till November. Pulling up like Trey Young just to freeze up December. I got niggas on the blood like traditional sinners. OGs love me, so I hang with traditional winners. I took a break for a minute, I had to go charge up. Had to focus on my business, I'm coming back smarter. Heat up DJ, sell them go like I'm dropping the Carter. Coming back like KD, it's time to go harder. Bounce back, can't let you fold up. Keep pushing, can't let you slow up. Bounce back, can't let you fold up. Keep pushing, can't let you slow up. Bounce back, can't let you fold up. Keep pushing, can't let you slow up. Bounce back, can't let you fold up. Keep pushing, can't let you slow up. They say that life's a marathon, man, shout out to Nip. They start to think you falling off and they starting to flip. Circumstances start to change and they jump in the ship. Only ones that really matter who's tied to your hip. They tried to push you to the side because they thought you would quit. May bend but never break, your cloth is legit. When you return in rare form, they all gonna be sick. You ever seen a living legend, just know that I'm me. Slow grind like IT, just know that I'm me. Now I'm back up in my bag, I'm giving them fits. Bounce a bat like John Morant, you know that I'm lit. Making play like Jack Bash, I'm never gonna see. Had to be patient, so I waited for the Welcome back here, Jordy Collada Show, live here on this Wednesday pre-Thanksgiving. We appreciate you being out there. Make sure to hit that like button, share button, comment button. What's your Thanksgiving Day plans? What you got, Lloyd? Thanksgiving plans? I'm trying to figure them out. We have some family in Alexandria, and that's where I got into the debate of I'll go there for Thursday. And then just come back Friday and go to the game Saturday. I don't know if my family's staying, so I just have three tickets just to go to the LSU football game because I want to go. Last game of the year, Texas a and I'm wondering if that takes precedent know, man, over I'm family. Bummed. I'm, I'm bummed I'm not going to be there. That's what I'm saying. So I could either watch it. I got to imagine the family would probably get together on Saturday morning and watch the game. Yeah. I got a lot of. I got some phone calls to make. Mm. What are your plans? Uh, I'll be out of town. Um, See, they could just come to Baton Rouge and make everything a lot easier. I'll be out of town. Um, and this will be the first year I'm trying to remember in how long I have not made one game. Damn. Wait, I thought football, you, went to, you went to the Bama game. 
Oh, I, yeah. I, I'm talking about a home game. Home game. Oh. Home game. I thought you went to Auburn game. Home game. You didn't go to Auburn game? I went to pre uh, tailgate. I didn't go in. Ah, damn. It's tough. This is, I mean, this would be a this, great one to pick. This is the but... least amount of games I've been to in the last probably five, six years. Yeah, I guess the Bama game is the, 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 the only time that I saw him play live. Yeah. Like, COVID year was like, I didn't go to any games. No, you weren't allowed. Yeah. And then 2021, I didn't really go to any games either. Went to A&M that year. Jerry Jenkins. This would be oh, a great nice. one. All whites. Yeah. I mean, I haven't missed a home game this year. I'd hate for it to be the last one. It just sucks that it's at 11 a.m. That's, that's the... Well, we're all going to not be in Baton Rouge. Yeah, that's the killer. I mean, I'll probably be back. It's just... What's the schedule on Saturday? Bama and Auburn. Bama and Auburn at 2.30. Mm-hmm. They had the 2.30 game, which, I mean... That doesn't make – that almost feels like it should be an 11 a.m. game. It can't be, though. Well, I know. I know. The Iron I know. Bowl. I know. I know. I know. I mean, you can't put the Iron Bowl at 11 a.m., Anything Jordy. Anything can happen in the Iron Bowl. I, but I mean, mean, it's the Tide versus the Tigers. Last one. <laughs> it's just such a bad matchup. It's Ohio terrible. State, Michigan. I mean, like, they're going to be – that game's going to be 50 to nothing. At half, probably. I mean, it's they... going to be so boring. Who else is on? Georgia, Georgia Tech? Mm-hmm. Georgia, it's rivalry Georgia Tech week. is at 6.30. 6.30? Clemson, was... South Carolina? Clemson, South Carolina. Do they play that week? I don't, I don't even see them on And that. you have Michigan, Ohio State, obviously. Also, no, I know that You're one. sharing 11 a.m. But... Florida, Florida State? Now, that's the more interesting one because Florida State got dropped down to five in the CFB rankings. I thought that and was, they're undefeated. I thought that was going to be yes. It is going to be yes. But it's also situation. it goes into what we've always talked about with this thing. It nothing matters until so, next weekend, yeah. and they just they give you something because they know we'll all be yeah. talking about the Who fact that they yeah. unseated Florida State and moved Penix and Washington in, when really it doesn't mean anything until next week. You know, and if Florida State closes the year out and they go undefeated, they win Saturday versus Florida and they close it out versus Louisville in the ACC title game, they have to put him in. They'll be in. They have to put him in. What if Washington wins their side of the bracket? They'd be undefeated uh, Pac-12 champs. Yeah. But they play had, Oregon again? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what it's trending to be. Yeah. But I think the Travis Hunter news is more of why Florida State's out. They have a backup quarterback. And Jordan it, Travis? Jordan Travis. Travis Hunter is still in Colorado. Yeah, uh, yeah Jordan Travis <laughs> being after he – has a season ending injury and then you see Florida State drop, it's kind of what's more do people want to watch or how good are they without their quarterback? Well that's that's what this debate is. This is a television show. Right. Right? Like at the end of the day, this is pushing ratings, looking for the best matchup that people are going to watch. That's what the task of the committee is, is to make sure that there is money Ooh. out there to be made for the advertisers, Ooh. for the investors, for the money that, that is involved. And you know, I mean, once you realize that it is a TV show and that they want to feed the talking heads and they want to feed the storylines that, you know, really weeks seven, eight, nine, ten of rankings don't really mean anything. I mean, they, they really don't as far as the ultimate shakeout and what ultimately is going to happen. Every year the football has, has taken care of it. Like every year. This is the one year. Yeah, but I, I still it's not over. You know, I mean, it, it still has opportunities to... To, to make that happen, and I, 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 I'm not ready to bet against that yet. I still think that the football is going to take take care of it. I mean, it, it'll shake itself out on the field to to what it's supposed to look like. I, I don't I don't think that you're going to have to get in a scenario where you have to have these, you know, comparisons where you're looking at mirror image teams and have to choose one or the other. I, I think all of what needs to happen on the field is going to happen and that'll really spell it out so well that's where you get into scenarios where it won't georgia alabama sec championship that could be a georgia with one loss Mm -hmm. and then what do you do ohio state michigan played this weekend one of them has to lose Mm -hmm. and then you have washington and oregon who have to play Mm -hmm. if oregon gets revenge against washington now they're boosting there with one loss both to each other and florida state's over there going we haven't lost anything but you lost your quarterback yeah and so that's what I'm. And then you have Alabama looking outside, looking in, even if they win the SEC championship potentially. I, I just don't see Bama beating Georgia in the SEC. Championship no, I'm just painting the scenarios and winning. It, it could happen. It could, but I just think like Milrow's still one dimensional. Uh, like you still get that one dimension from him. I care and about if you, he, Stewie. If he, 
I just think Georgia's too good. Exactly. Like yeah. they they just roll it like everything at you. Like I just think Georgia's Yeah, too Carson good. Beck has kind of found the other side of the coin here. Mm-hmm. Beck's he, a nice little value of the Heisman play right he is. now. Yeah. Fifty to one odds. And he'll be on that, that weekend where that stage. Yeah, where that platform where everybody will be watching Still and if he beat. has that big game versus Bama. Hopefully he could steal some votes, really, yeah. more than anything. Yeah, I'd take that, but, like, I just still not as exciting as watching number five. No, no. nobody is. He's just on a, he's on a machine. Yeah, he's on a whole new level, man. He, he's on a whole nother level. Uh, all right, appreciate everybody being out there. Make sure and hit that like button, share button, comment button. We're going to head to the holidays a little early here. Get out of here before 9 a.m. Oh, not, yo. real quick, just, so, just a little college football like preview of the weekend. You got the Egg Bowl tomorrow. 6.30, Mississippi versus Mississippi State. I don't think anybody cares about that, but it is games to watch. TCU, Oklahoma tomorrow, and Oregon State, Oregon on Friday at 7.30, and then you get into your regularly scheduled programming. But football is coming as nigh. You'll get to watch some games on, obviously, NFL on Thanksgiving, but college football always, those late-night games, I feel like when it gets a little bit hazy and gets pretty fun mm. for the gamblers out there. Yes. Especially much the family. This is a uh, this is a great time of sports year. Mm-hmm. It's a great sports calendar time. Uh, all right, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, we'll be back with you Monday morning, 7 a.m. Have a great day. Is Missouri only seven and a half? Monday through Friday from 7 to 9. Yeah, you see the notification. We about to go live. We got all your favorite guests. We got them in line. It's the Jordan Collider Show. Come have a good time. It's the hottest show around. We ain't got to flex. Call up G, we get it done. We earning our respect. Tell recruits to let us in. Where they going next? Throw up the L's. Now we lit. Band playing net. From the booth to the east to the west coast. No matter where we at, we live. Mic'd up for show. Open up the phone lines. Come and join the show. Make sure you tell your friends about Jordan Collider Show. Yeah, Monday through Friday from 7 to 9. Yeah, you see the notification. We about to go live. We got all your favorite guests. We got them in line. It's the Jordan Collider Show. Come have a